Hi, I'm Maria Lang, a solutions architect at LoSant. LoSant's Visual Workflow Engine is a node-based, low-code, drag-and-drop workflow editor that makes it easy to build all kinds of business logic. Throughout this video, I will be working off of the LoSant Industrial Equipment Monitoring Application Template, which can be found in the LoSant Application Template Library. Let's dive in. So I've pulled up our simulation workflow. And now what you see in front of you is our visual workflow engine. And this is where everything comes together. It is a central orchestration tool that integrates with all of the devices, data, and other components of the LoSAMP platform. To the left, what you see is our node library or palette. The center is our canvas where we drag and drop and build the process controls and then on the right is where all of the settings and the real-time debug log lives. Now this is just like other places in Losan where we have the real-time log that just makes it very easy to problem solve and debug. Now rather than work off of this workflow, let's go ahead and create a simple workflow that will monitor temperature of our generators. When creating a workflow, you have three options, three different types to choose from. There's an application workflow, which ex executes on the cloud, and it's for general purpose processing and data handling. There's your experience workflows, which also execute on the cloud, and they are designed for the data handling and custom backend logic for application experiences. So they're able to handle experience endpoint requests, and they are also versioned with the application experiences. The final type are our edge workflows. Now these are unique in that they are built on the cloud, but then they're deployed to the LoSAN edge agent that's running in the local environment. So they run directly on the edge agent, which means they're able to run without an internet connection. For this example, we'll just go ahead and build an application workflow. So we're gonna do temperature monitoring of our generators. So when you get started building a workflow, you have over in your node library, you have the, the green triggers. Triggers are what start off your workflow. We have something like this device state, which is the most commonly used one. And that will trigger a workflow when new information for a certain device becomes available. We also have MQTT, uh, webhook triggers, the timer trigger, which would trigger on a certain frequency, and then your virtual button, which is a super powerful trigger, powerful tool to use when building a workflow because you can manually trigger the workflow. We've got our experience nodes, which are these red ones, our logic nodes, which operate on the payload data Op operate and manipulate it. The purple nodes are our data nodes and they are able to bring together all internal and external data sources. So you see the AWS up here, GCP. You also see information around the tables and the LoSAN API. And then finally, we've got our outputs, which are orange. And these are what you want to happen based off of the data that you've processed. That could be send a text message or um, reply to a webhook or even report state on a device, which is um, something that is done on a regular basis. We also have the debug node, which is one of our outputs, which allow you to populate the debug log over on the right. There's also this custom node section of the LoSAN node palette and what it does is it allows you to build your own nodes and then add them to this palette so you can use them in all of your different workflows within your application. So for this temperature monitoring of our generators, what we're gonna do is use a device state node and a debug node to start with. I like to do it this way because I like to see the data. I like to see the payload path and make sure I know exactly what I'm getting as I build. So we can choose a device itself, or we can choose a tag that's 
linked to those metadata tags on the device. So I'm going to choose device recipe equals generator, which is going to pull every device that was created using that device recipe. Um, so all of my generators. And then I've connected it to a debug, so I should be able to see it populate. So as the information comes in from our device state, we'll see the, inf we'll see the debug panel populate a payload path that we can then use to build out our workflow. So I'm going to pause our debug panel and what I want to do is find a condition node, conditional, which I'm going to drop right here in the middle. And then I'm going to pull out our manifold temperature. All your payload paths, you can copy the full path. And that's really helpful because it prevents you from any making any typos or um, skipping a layer of the payload itself. And I'm going to say, let me know when the temperature is greater than 800 degrees. So I've deployed this and I will now only get a debug if the temperature is greater than 800 degrees. Now that's great, but what I really want to do is send an email every time that happens. So if I pull up my email node, drag it in, and then uh, high temp. You can customize this body, so I'm actually going to put in the body where it says my custom body. I'm going to put that same data that manifold temperature, so I know the temperature. So we'll say data device dot ID temperature reported at and then I'm going to save it, update it, and save. And now when that value goes over 800, it's going to send an email and it's going to say this device had a temperature greater than 800 degrees. Now typically, we wouldn't want to send an email or a notification out for something that's not super critical every time it, it goes over. So what I'd like to do to cut out some of the noise, because you might get a random high temp reading, is use our data gauge query. So this node is data gauge query node. It's going to query information from our time series database. And I'm going to choose the specific device from the payload, which is here at device.id. So I'll copy that over, drop it in here, and I'm going to choose manifold temperature. And I'm going to aggregate this data. So I want to bring it, I want to take all the data for the last 15 minutes, and I'm going to take the average of it so that I can eliminate any noise in the data. And I'm going to drop it right on my payload path. Mean dot mean temp. And then I'm going to use the conditional on the mean temp rather than the temperature coming in right this second. So that will eliminate any kind of noise that we see coming in from the data. We're just going to take the mean. Now once this is all complete, I can connect that there. But now what I now that this is complete, let's talk about some other information surrounding your your web your workflows. So we have settings here, which is how you name it or add a description to your workflow. Then there is versioning which allows us to actively develop a workflow that's currently in production. So when we get it to the point where we like it and we want it to be actually running, we can version it. So if I were to create a new version, let's just call it version 1.0. I can create that version. And now I can continue to develop this workflow, make it more complicated and complex, but I'm still gonna get those emails 
if this mean of data goes over 800 degrees. We then have our workflow storage, which allows us to store information and retrieve information across workflow runs. And this is very commonly, you see this used for something like a moving average. We have our workflow metrics, which provide a high level overview statistics about the usage and performance of your workflow. They will also record any critical errors registered to your workflow runs. This is your debug log right here. And then finally, you've got your globals, which provide constant key value information to your payload. And they also bring in application globals. So you can define information at the application level and all workflows can access that. And this is something you'll see like API keys would be a very common use for a global. So let's jump back into our simulated devices just so we see a more complicated workflow running. And I just would like to reiterate, you know, workflows are the central orchestrational layer behind all of LoSAN's offerings. They have direct integration to all of the data sources, our integrations, webhooks, and then also third-party data sources. And it allows, and it's where all the application business logic is created. If you would like to learn more, I would recommend looking into LoSant University, which will provide a deeper dive into what I covered today. And you can also explore our documentation and forums. If you like what you see and you're ready to jump in, go ahead and create a sandbox in the LoSant account.